Hello, hello, everybody. Um, welcome. Welcome to Gay Games Hong Kong monthly seminar. Um, thank you again for dialing in. Grab your tea, coffee, because we like to call it, um, you know, tea, tea and coffee with Gay Games Hong Kong, or perhaps a, a glass of wine. And uh, let's spend um, the hour together. We have people from around the world tonight. So um, thank you for dialing in early morning or late at night for, for some of you. And thank you for being very interested in knowing more about this exciting event. So as you know, or as you want to find out, Gay Games Hong Kong 2022 will take, uh, will take place on the 11th and, and to the 19th November 2022, which is exactly 624 days. So I will ask um, our uh, panelists today to turn on the ca camera. Greg, we would love to see how you look like. <laughs> well, here we go, thank you very much. Um, so today's topic is, is really, really um, dear to my heart. We're going to talk about volunteers. Um, you will be maybe surprised to know that um, so far we have over 130 uh, volunteers. We like to call them professional volunteers. Why we use that term, which might sound a bit funny, is just because we have we are filling the the position that we need with people that have the skill and knowledge in that certain position. So we have 130 uh, professional volunteers, and um, these um, these individuals are giving generously their time to help deliver. Um, the best gay games ever, or at least um, gay games Hong Kong. So we first talked to um, Johnny Evans, the co-president of the Federation of um, Gay Games. Um, so it's going to be a recorded interview. Uh, she's actually in the UK and um, just right now she's working hard at her day job. So we'll have a great, great, great recorded interview. Then we'll talk to um, David Wong and David is just here. Say hi, David. Everybody. So David is a Gay Game Hong, Hong Kong Chief of Staff. Um, he's, a, he's a great friend and a great team member, but he's also one of our longest running volunteer. So that's why he's here with us tonight. And we have uh, Greg Molly. Greg is our um, Director of People and Organizations. And Greg is actually taking care of our volunteer, you know, very, very well, as well as recruiting people that can help us, recruiting those professional volunteers. Uh, we might have another guest later, but uh, we'll see if she's coming in. And then um, Dennis, Dennis, our co-chair, is actually going to dial in um, a little bit later. So let's watch um, that really, really nice interview with Johnny Evans. Um, please play at, pay attention of her passion and enthusiasm. Hello, hi, thank you again, uh, Johnny, for taking part of our webinar under the theme Volunteer for Gay Games Hong Kong and Live the Experience of a Lifetime. Hello, hi, thank you again, uh, Johnny, for taking part of our webinar under the theme Volunteer for Gay Games Hong Kong and Live the Experience of a Lifetime. So maybe we can first um, ask you to introduce yourself a little. Hi, um, my name is Joni Evans. I'm the current co-president of the Federation of Gay Games. Um, I live in London, um, in the north of London, in an area called Islington. And I've been involved in LGBTQ sports for oh, over 30 years now. So um, hopefully that can tell you a bit more about my experience as Great. we go along. So you have a lot of um, a lot of things to share with us tonight. Um, as I say, so you are a I understand a football player of what we call a, a soccer player. Um, yeah. So tell me a little bit more about your sporting background. Well, um, I was working in. I used to work with children, so I worked in sort of like what would some people call kinder cart garden. We called nursery, but um, it was at a time before I I was sort of feeling that I things weren't right for me in my life, and I needed to do something different. Plus, 
in terms of that, I was coming to terms with my own sexuality at that time. So I had to choose something different to do in order to be free to be different. And so doing something different. So because I very much love sport and never had the opportunity to do anything with sport growing up, because for as women, you know, you're not encouraged to do much in, in regards to sport. So when I was 25, I left full-time employment, went to college and did a recreation and leisure course, which in terms of that, you did stuff to do with the hospitality side of sports. And you also did loads of sporting um, coaching badges and stuff like that. So you got you could um, learn more about individual sport. And then I always loved football. Um, for some people, soccer, I always loved it. But, you know, at a certain age, girls were stopped playing because it wasn't seen as a thing. So I didn't think that it was something that as a woman that I could do. But while I was doing my coaching bags, the, 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 the trainer or the, 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 the guy that was leading the, the course said to me, oh, why don't you join a team? And I'm going, but there's no teams. And he's going, but there are. And so in terms of that, I got really excited. And um, I had friends that lived in um, one part of London called Hackney, and they knew of a women's team. So I got introduced to Hackney, then found out Hackney were full with loads of lesbians, but they weren't necessarily an out team. So it got to the point that through a lot of abuse that we were getting as a team and people were coming at us a lot because we were an, a predominantly lesbian, we decided we were going to be an out team. We were going to promote ourselves as such. And because the best thing that we wanted to do was to play football. So that's, that's how it all started. So right. in terms of being an out team, that put you on a, a different platform because mm. people wanted to know more. They wanted to know about the team. They wanted to know what we were doing. It was around the times when the AIDS epidemic was quite high. So in mm -hmm. terms of that, there was loads of things that was going on time. at that time, yeah. And so I became involved in this film that talked about the gay game. So when I found out about the gay games, it was like, whoa, I found a lesbian team. <laughs> so that was- was, really was this in the same year? Um, no, no, it all happened over a number of years. Cause okay. the thing is, is I started playing in the late, 80s so when I was 25 it was 98 going on to 1990. Mm, it took you a while. And then my team went to our first gay games in New York in 94. Amazing. So that was what really springboarded it because what that did is that created conversations within the UK especially in London around um, LGBT sports. And just, just, just sorry to cut you off, but um, so this, I know this is fantastic. Um, so when you were joining the team, so this is not a professional, um, that wasn't on being professional. You were, you were just a player. You were just a volunteer yeah. player, correct? Yeah, this is yes. grassroots. Okay. This is, if you can get 11 people on the pitch mm. playing on that Sunday, you were lucky. If you all wore the same color red shirt, you were lucky. That was the type of grassroots. So I've never had a paid role in all of the stuff that I've done. All of the stuff that I've done has been voluntary because mm. I love, if you love what you do, you'd want others to, to love the same. So for me, I mean, I grew up in Birmingham, England, you know, coming from my parents, so, of the I'm of the Rindrush generation so there was nothing for us you make what you want but finding a group of like-minded people just was such an exciting thing for me and I always felt that I was the only one that loved sport the way that I did and you know finding other people that love sport the same and being able to encourage more people because what came out of our team coming out was our team grew like three times as big as what it was before. We had too many players and, we had to make. And just to be teams. just to be very clear, this was a all women's team, yeah, correct? Yes. And yes. all so out, an all out women's team. 
yeah and we were all out we were, we were all, all volunteers all so volunteers. Just, yeah yes and the thing is is that the more that I went on I found more people going to the gay games then you find out about the federation of gay games and what that they do so it's like it's only through a friend of mine who's now passed sadly passed away Ivan Bosson who encouraged me to get more involved because he was doing stuff in London and in terms of that it was like he was a delegate for um for London and he couldn't go to a board meeting and he asked me to go in his place and I think that wow I would never have had that opportunity if he hadn't he was he sort of funded me to go and he's a volunteer himself so mm. And that's how I got to know about the Federation. And then I was the first female vice president of diversity for the Federation. But even as a volunteer, sometimes things being a volunteer can be difficult. It's like, you might not have the funds to help you help your organization, even though you're a volunteer, you're not needed. But in terms of that, there wasn't, I think I wasn't able to continue for a few years after that because I couldn't, I felt that there was a way that I could afford to be a volunteer. Okay. And that shouldn't yep. be the case. Mm. So in terms of that, it's really about trying to make sure that you can encourage people to be volunteers. Because being a volunteer shouldn't cost you anything. So in terms of that, it should only cost you your passion. And for me, it's that I had loads of passion and I had loads of people around me that were very encouraging as well. And it's the joy that you get from volunteering is so much more because I do it not for me, but for those that that hasn't had the experiences that I've had. So going to my first gay game was just like mind blowing. Um, my Where was that again? Can you can you remember the dates and the city again? You remind of yours? New, it was in New York in 1994, and all I remember it was in the summer. Um, it was around the same time as the 25th anniversary of Stonewall. Mm. So it, it sort of tied in with a lot of things, a similar way like Hong Kong is going to tie in with the Federation's 40th anniversary. So in terms of that, there's all these different milestones that it's really great to be part of. So, mm. you know, the message that was given out by the Federation of Gay Games then wasn't just that we're all queer and we're here to play sports. We were here there to make a statement as well. And being part of that was, was just sort of like really huge. So I don't know, it's like for me, I've always, and the different stages have just led me to different things. Never yeah. in my whole entire lifetime would have I imagined I'd be the co-president of the Federation of mm. Games. You know, from my beginnings, I live in a, a one bedroom apartment in North London that's social housing. I don't live in a condo in San Francisco. Um, and to me, I, I, I still have the same enthusiasm now as I did when I walked out and played my first game for my local team, having never kicked a ball. <laughs> Well, thank you thank you for sharing this i think this is this is actually something that a lot of our viewers would be very interested in i mean volunteering sometimes it's just a life um yes. and a great life um or oh, in all those years um do you have any special memories or any special moments you want to share with our audience i mean you I mentioned think... the first time in time in, in new york but is there anything that's very special one or two maybe the the I think the most special moment that made me feel like, and it, I hope I don't cry about it, but um, the one special moment for me was walking out as the co-president of the Federation of Gay Games in Cleveland. Because Cleveland for me, it was even though it was the smallest games, it had it had the most meaning because- What what date was that? Do you want to remind us? Um, it, it was, I don't have dates. I'm really bad at dates. Okay, so never mind. Dates. It's okay, it's fine. But it was the 28, 2014, 2014 games was in Cleveland. It was our smallest games to date. Um, 
there a lot of people didn't feel that Cleveland was the right place to go or it didn't have the right emphasis. But the thing is, is that there was so many, it was, but for me, Cleveland helped because there was a lot of the population in Cleveland was like 54% African-American. So to me, I knew that I would see a lot of black people there. And in some ways I was a bit worried because that's never been the, you know, you don't, you do see black people there, but there's never been an emphasis or anything like that. So to me, it was quite special. It was like after the opening ceremony and all the hoo-ha and the noise and everything, I was at, back at the hotel and I was standing outside having a, it, you know, cigarettes, people don't smoke, what I do. And a young man, a young black man came up to me and he, and he said to me, I want to thank you um, because when I saw you walking out of that, uh, walking out at the opening ceremony, he said, for the first time, I felt like I belonged. And to me, I wanted to cry because I never thought that I would made a difference. And that's the thing is about volunteering. It's about making a difference. This was a young man who'd never come out to his family. He'd had a car accident two weeks before the games and, and thought he couldn't make the games and he was being upset. But having the games in Cleveland meant that he could come out to his family safely. And for them to have the whole of the gay community and every type of gay LGBTQ plus there for his family to see and have examples of so that they could see that he was safe. And that to me was the, the pinnacle of my volunteering is somebody saying that I made a difference. And, and, and I never thought that I don't do it to do that. I just do it because I love doing what I do. But that moment, it's just that's always held with me all the time and keeps me going because if, it, if I'm going to make a difference, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you very much for sharing. This is this is a very, very lovely story. Um, I hope maybe that young man is watching tonight <laughs> or the recording. Who knows? Who knows? Well, I hope that he's continued in his thing you know, doing what he's doing. But, you know, in terms of what's happening in Cleveland, there's still so much going on there that the effects of the gay games are still happening there. We heard the other day that they're, they're gonna make a, they're doing some memorial thing in their airport. And one of the moments over all of the years that they wanna recognize is the 2014 gay games. So, Amazing. Yeah, it has made Amazing. a huge difference. Amazing. Um, so, as you know, um, Hong Kong um, at the moment has uh, 130 volunteers and we like to call them professional volunteers. It might sound a little bit funny, but it just means that it's people who have skills and knowledge in whatever role they have been put in, are actually giving uh, their skill and knowledge uh, for free to the gay game. So this is what we call them about, um, you know, professional volunteers what would you tell these people i mean gay games is uh gay games hong kong is in over 600 days now but what would you tell this uh this amazing team of 130 pro professional volunteers in hong kong and around the world that's that are working on the gay games hong kong i'd like to say a big huge thank you for all of the work that you're doing it's so important because it gives a great message to those who are like-minded who are somewhere that may not know that this event is going to be happening, that they can be involved, that you know your whatever skill you have is a great skill. But having people who do have who want to share their knowledge with others is such a huge, you know, it's a massive thing to do. And I commend anybody. I mean, my skill is talking. Um, so in terms of that, is that I, I love it when I have people who have skills in all different areas can help to enhance others to be the best that they can. So that to me, is that I, you know, if I could, I'd hold you all in a big massive hug and say huge, huge thank you because this is how we manage is through the generosity of people wanting to share 
their knowledge and their, their experiences just to make others feel um, welcome. And what would you say to someone that is thinking of volunteering but is not really sure? What could be the, the arguments we could I use? would say to them is that think of the benefit that that might give somebody else who's in a similar position to you but don't know one thing that you know. So in terms of that, we all may have similar things is that we all may love sports. But do we know that there's a sport that we can do that will enhance ourselves and, and, and our well-being? So in terms of that, it's like if we've got one person on their own, knowing that they can do something and there's somebody else who has the knowledge to give them that information, then that is what um, people should think about. It's about how you share, how you share your knowledge and your experiences, mate. You know, this is all about when we talk about inclusion and equality and, you know, participation and all of those things. You know, for me, the greatest thing is that I would want everybody to have the experience of at least going to one gay game to make their mind up. Um, so, you know, and the thing is, is there's so many aspects of it that people can get involved with. It's like, you know, even you know, tell one, tell all, do you know what I mean? It's just, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be a thing that takes up your whole life like it has for most of us. But the, the one thing that you might be able to do might make it better for somebody else. And that's all I would be saying to anybody who's taking on volunteer. You need to want to do that. Great, thank you. Um, anything else you want to add? No, only that I'm just really looking forward to going to Hong Kong and just that is the, the one thing out of all of what's going on is the, the one beacon for me. It's the one thing that's kept me going through all the pandemic because it's kept me busy. <laughs> but the thing is, is that, you know, the volunteers that are working for you guys are exceptional. Um, you're doing a fantastic job. I think some of the times we have to be catching up a bit but um i think that's the way in which things are being run by you guys are just done on such a professional level that you know i'm just in awe of of, of all what you're doing already so you know you're doing a fantastic job over there and we at the fgd are also very proud of, of what you're doing and we fully fully support everything that you do so you know we're 100 percent Hong Kong waiting to do all of the celebrations there so yeah. great great then uh, so we'll see you uh, I mean I'm sure we'll see you before that but uh, we'll see you in Hong Kong in uh, in November 2022 thank you so much Johnny thank yeah. you very much for sharing um, thank you for sharing uh, you know your life as a volunteer and um, and your great passion it's always my pleasure know me anything to help always there <laughs> great thanks a lot bye right. bye so this was a uh, a recording into a recorded interview um interview was done a couple of days ago so i haven't changed since then um before we start chatting with our uh, lovely lovely guest um tonight um i just wanted to kind of talk about something um Gay games or any events in such a scales needs amazing volunteers, but we also need, uh, we need money. We need a little bit of something. We have some great sponsors and we'll talk about this um, maybe in a couple of months and uh, you, you'll be informed about this. But we also want to say that if you can't volunteer physically, um, you can help and we can actually make it very easy for you. Every penny counts, every voice counts. So I'm going to put a, um, a link of a crowdfunding website on this, on this chat in a couple of minutes. And um, let's see, and you can raise as little or as much money as you want. The, I think the, we, we say we call it the $1 campaign. So you can just send $1, $5, this is US dollars, or a little bit more. And let's try to see if we can raise at least 50 US 
US dollars um, at the end of this, um, this little chat we have today. So we have a little bit less than 40 minutes now. I'm gonna send the link. But uh, before that, uh, after that, let's just have a, have a chat with, um, with David. Hello, David, do you wanna turn on your microphone? Yeah, hello, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself? I think I introduced um, you a little bit, but you want to actually give us a little bit more information about yourself? Yes, thanks, thanks, Betty. And um, yes, yeah, so my name is David Wong. I've been in Hong Kong well ten years of my life now. I'm originally from London, and I love being here. And on the Gay Games, I'm chief of staff, and that essentially is looking after the governance of the management team. Um, that ranges from taking minutes and reporting the progress of how we're doing to the FGG and uh, a lot of chasing around, a lot of logistics. And some of you may know, I look after the onboarding for our new joiners. So as I was introducing you earlier, you're yeah. one of the longest running volunteers. So I believe we, we've met a long time ago and I believe you've been with the gay game project, dream, um, even before the bid. Um, do you remember the year? And do you remember how you actually got into it? Yes, I've done my homework. Yes, it's 2016, it's five years ago. I can't believe it's so long ago now. And um, at the time, I'd never heard of the gay games, I'll be honest, I didn't know anything about it. And uh, one of my friends said to me, look at the gay games, I need some help putting the bid book together. This was uh, the bid submission basically say, why Hong Kong, why we're such a great country and what we can, how we can do it. So it was uh, putting together 300 pages and coordinating with about 30 people of all the bits of information. Like I said, simply just saying how great we were. And um, once we'd finished that booklet, well, it wasn't a booklet, so it's like a bundle of 300 pages. I just thought, wow, this is really impressive. It was it demonstrated our potential and I thought, wow, I want to be part of this. And I obviously stayed on. Okay, fantastic. And I believe you were also there when we presented uh, in Paris. So yes. you've been, you know, quite a few sleepless nights. It's been never ending, it's been, but it's been great. It's such a, it's, um, a wonderful, exciting thing. I, can't, I just can't wait for 2022. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And also the fact that it's, it's actually, it's happening now. I mean, I remember we were talking about it. It was something that was quite uh, up in the air, but now this is, this is, you know, this is really great. This is really happening. Um, can you tell me, how did you actually become the volunteer? What, how, I mean, did you just, just write something in? Did you meet someone or how did that happen? Um, what is your story? Somebody was on the team and they said, um, like I said, they're going to be putting the bid book together. I had some free time and something I could do. And I thought, yeah, I could do that. And I honestly thought I'd be doing a few weeks worth of work. And so maybe I can uh, ask David you next. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Oh, you're back. Okay, you saved me. From I'm back, I'm back. Sorry, something, uh, no problem. Something, sometimes, you know, we live, we live people. Something seems to happen. So, um, yeah, so you met someone and said, so, have you actually before, and I'm still talking to David, sorry. Um, so David, have you uh, volunteered for um, any LGBT project before that, or that was your first one? It's my, my first time. Like I said, I had never heard of the okay. gay games and the rest was history. And you've been, you've been doing amazing. Um, this is a question I'm gonna ask the others, but how, what would you say to someone that's thinking of volunteering for the gay games? just to coin a phrase from Nike, just do it. It's uh, the, the team is growing exponentially now. It's, I, I, I look after onboarding. So we have about maybe five or six people a week. And um, it's a once in a lifetime project to be part of. And it's, it's more than a project, it's a legacy. So, and I'm sure in a decade's time, I still be talking about it. And equally, it, it, it brings so much change to people around us. And when I think of, say, the UK, how far forward that in terms of LGBT, and I think of Hong Kong and Asia, there's a lot we can move forward on here. And I think it's, it's just great to be part of that momentum. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, it's, um, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit to, to Greg now. So Greg, would you want to introduce yourself and see what you actually do in, in our team? Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, thanks for both of you for uh, including me. Uh, Greg Morley, and I've been involved with Gay Games for about two and a half years now. And uh, I'm responsible with my team for all of the people and organization matters for uh, the Gay Games Hong Kong. And that ranges from everything uh, as working closely with David to recruit and onboard a really professional group of individuals, uh, to consulting with each of the members of the team on things like building their team or motivating their team, and also to help us to think about now what is our plan and process and system going to be for when we eventually hire the 3,000 volunteers that will be part of creating an amazing experience in Hong Kong and also uh, welcoming hopefully many of you that are on the call to come to Hong Kong and have an amazing experience and a really truly Hong Kong experience in, in uh, November 2022. And then I have a day job too. So my day job is uh, a head of HR for uh, a company, Moet Hennessy, which is part of LVMH. And I'm responsible for HR in Asia, as well as global diversity and inclusion for Moet Hennessy. So I feel like I have three jobs and I love them all uh, equally, but this one uh, takes my heart uh, specifically. Great, great, thank you. And um, I mean, we heard Johnny, I thought, uh... I thought everybody would have enjoyed this interview. She was she was amazing, and I'm going to ask you the same question. So, how did you become a a volunteer for for Gay Games Hong Kong? So I'll uh, I'll share a, a discussion I had with uh, Dennis, and this was um, I think 2016 or 15. I can't remember. So just uh, I'm going to cut you off just yeah. just now because I think maybe not all of our viewers oh. know know Dennis. Um, Dennis is our co-chair and uh, he's a, a lovely, lovely gentleman, great friend. And but then if he tells you, um, let's have coffee, you will be round up to be a volunteer. So I don't know if that's happened to you, but uh, that's why this this chat is called Coffee with Gay Games in a way. But let's hear about your story. Yeah, thank you for uh, for for. An, uh introducing Dennis. So uh, we were friends and uh, we were standing outside the gym chit-chatting and he said, oh, I have this idea to bring this thing called Gay Games to Hong Kong in 2022. I listened to him and I frankly walked away thinking he was crazy. There were so many things I hadn't considered and of course you all had been very much part of putting the bid book together and starting that process. Uh, then um, I had the opportunity to go to Gay Games in Paris, and it was a really life-changing experience for me from the, pers per from the specific of being a participant. So my entire life, I've played a lot of sports quite poorly, but I like to be involved with sports. I like the athleticism of it, but I've never been a champion sports person of any, any level. So walking onto a football soccer pitch at the opening ceremony was just like a wow that I could have never imagined in my life, being surrounded by all of these people from different countries and cultures, which is a part of the life that I just love. Uh, and then participating in a sport, again, not very well, but being part of a group to participate in a sport was amazing to me. And I also had the opportunity to talk with some participants uh, and, and I was starting to think about joining the team and I wanted to know why they had gone to gay games. And I talked specifically to three of the team members from China. And uh, one of them spoke English well enough that we could communicate. And I asked them why they had come to uh, gay games. And they had a number of different reasons. But at the end of the conversation, the guy says to me, he said, I never could have imagined in my life that there was such a positive world where gay people could be themselves. And I was just like, so, touched by that and I was all in. That to me was the reason to be part of this because if we can change the world from the inside out of people for one person, then it's worth doing gay games. And I know that it changes the world for many thousands of people, all of the people who have participated in the history of gay games and certainly all of the people who will come for the first time to Hong Kong. So uh, once we came back from Paris, um, I was uh, really all in and uh, have been uh, probably every day getting more and more all in uh, to this uh, venture. 
Great. Th thank you very much for sharing, and uh, thank you very much for for your hard work and uh, you know keeping up keeping up uh, you know in and uh, looking at the ball. And um, just David, um, and I think we also listened something quite similar to uh, from 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 what Johnny was saying that she met someone that really said it made a difference in my life. Um, David, do you have such an experience, or do you have an experience that you wanted to share? You've been with us now for, you know, you said five years. Is this something very specific that you wanted to share? I think, I think the great memories I've had from the journey, um, I, I think there's two great memories that really stick out to me. One is uh, when we flew to Paris for the announcement, this is 2017, and it was a week long of presentations to the FGG, meeting the Paris team, and then doing the final presentation to about, I think it was about 200 people, I'm not sure now, but it was a lot of people. And the highlight of that week obviously was the night of the announcement. And it was like, everyone was nervous. It was a very, very posh grand venue in black tie. It felt like being at the Oscars. And when they announced, and the winning host city is Hong Kong, and it was just, the whole room exploded. It was, we were jumping and down, up and down. It just felt, wow, this is amazing. It just felt so good. And um, again, on that journey was the, the Paris 2018, actually walking into the stadium. So this is the opening ceremony right at the beginning. And uh, you had the crowd cheering, you had cheerleaders, the lights in the stadium were like shooting around. And it just made it feel, wow, this is so real. It's, it's, it's actually happening in Paris. And it was great to be proud of, of. I was very it's proud to be part of that. And also thinking, actually in four years time, we're doing this for Hong Kong. And uh, it's like, wow, this is, this is something that I'm just so happy to be part of. I know it's not four years time anymore. It's six hundred and four days. Um, I mean, I have. I was with you, and I think I can. I can share my personal stories. I was. I was with you. I was. With, I mean, I had. I had coffee with Dennis, where he was like, "Hey, you know, I want to do this," and I'm like, "Well, I'm really busy with a lot of different projects." And, but, yes, I think, the. I think we have to think of the the impact. Um, the games are going to make um, not only in our lives, our personal lives as volunteers, not only in Hong Kong, and uh, not only in Asia, but also in the world, in the world of our um, LGBTQ um, family, in the world of, of our allies, and in the world in, you know, for society as a whole, um, and the world of sports, sports and arts and culture. So I, I don't know, sometimes I'm just in awe of what um, what all our volunteers are doing. Um, every, any, everything, everything counts. And on that note, you remember earlier, I was saying that people can actually just kind of participate um, already. And we have already raised six uh, over, over that um, $50, uh, you know, little, little, so high uh, target I was mentioning. So thank you very much. Every little thing counts, every little penny counts. Um, I'm going to now to talk to you, David, a little bit more about our volunteer program. And I think we have a, we, we might have a little slide um, that we want to put up. Um, because um, Greg, you are in charge of, uh, of making sure that we have uh, enough volunteer, making sure that we have enough volunteer on the, um, and with the right skills for the for the right position so it sounds uh it sounds very serious but we are you know we are seriously in the gay game so you want to talk to us a little bit more about yeah that? so um first of all i think uh what i want to share is that uh, a lot of people from around the world have expressed interest to be part of the team whether that's to be part of the team we have now uh to participate as um uh, outreach or uh, volunteer champions in your local community, or uh, whether that means finally to participate or support when you come to Hong Kong. Um, and one thing I would uh, like to thank everybody for their patience, because some people have uh, sent us uh, interest uh, notes and said, oh, please, I'm interested. And sometimes it takes us a little bit of a while, a little bit of time to get back to you. And this is the nature of a volunteer organization. Sometimes it takes us a little bit of while to get back to you to figure out what's the right fit to make sure that we can properly use your experience, your location, uh, and your passion. So we have uh, a number of different roles that we're posting and we're trying to be more precise about the roles that we have now. 
uh, I think Betty, uh, you talked about this and, and certainly Joni mentioned it. I, I'm really impressed with this group of people. Um, I you know, worked in three big companies and I would put uh, our team up against the people that I work with professionally every day. Um, and I think it's a whole, so a whole different level of passion that uh, this team brings to what they do every day. Uh, volunteering is a balance. It's a balance between what your priorities in life are. So, you know, my priorities are my, my family. Uh, my priorities are my other jobs. But my priority is this as well. And, and that balance uh, is part of what we do every day. And I think one, the last thing I would say, maybe before I talk through some of the specific uh, volunteering opportunities, is that uh, what I feel like is in life, you, you, you draw energy from different parts of your life. And even though uh, this is a kind of an add-on to an already busy life, it's a part of my life that uh, I generate energy from. And that actually flows into the other parts of my life. Uh, I'm very fortunate that a lot of uh, our friends, common friends and network are also getting involved with gay games. And I feel like that's a bit of my mission now too, which is, this is a great opportunity, and I think uh, you know David and, and Betty are very much part of that for me. But it's also one I want to share with other people. So I want the people that I know and I care for to have the same experience I'm having to be part of the Gay Games organization, um, because it really is a, a life changing experience. And we haven't done anything in terms of a, an event yet, right? We've only been together to build this amazing machine, uh, and so far it's been an incredible experience. So how can you get involved if you're listening to this? Well, part of it is uh, back to the uh, uh, crowdfunding. We definitely can use the support uh, and you can really be part of helping us to put on an amazing gay games and also to have a very rigorous uh, scholarship program, which we're trying to do um, with the biggest ever scholarship program. There are also specific activities um, or specific roles that we have. We are in, at its core, a sports uh, activity and a sports uh, event. And so of course we have sporting uh, team uh, leads. I was thinking about this earlier. So why are these, uh, why are these roles interesting? Because they think, okay, well, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna organize the half marathon. But what's so interesting about these roles is not only are you organizing something that can be, will be quite awesome from an event, but you're working with people from around the world to do that. So if you're a sport organizer, not only are you organizing with Hong Kong uh, sports associations, but you're also in a lot of coordination with sporting associations across the world. And if I were somebody who was interviewing somebody in my day job and they said, oh, well, one of the things I did from a volunteer perspective was I organized the half marathon at Gay Games. Well, what's the half marathon at Gay Games? Well, it's this 12,000 uh, participant art and culture inclusion event that's a pretty interesting thing to talk about in your day life. Uh, so these are great experiences for people uh, beyond uh, just the gay games experience. So maybe you can go to the next page um, if there is a next page. Okay, go back to the other page. So uh, last thing I would say here is our website is ggHk2022.com. If you want to see what roles are open, please go to the vacancies. Um, if you just want us to have your name and contact for later, then please go there and uh, give that to us, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can uh, on, on the different roles. But we do have a lot of great roles. Most of them require right now you to be in Hong Kong, um, but certainly some of the uh, work can be done remotely, uh, and we're happy to, to hear uh, your interest. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg. Um, there was a couple of questions coming in. So um, I'm going to uh, to start um, asking you right now. I think it's just it just flows with what you were discussing. Um, yes. Someone was asking if they want to volunteer, um, would they have their accommodation and travel paid by Gay Games Hong Kong? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think that our, our hope is that uh, of the 3,000 volunteers, that the vast majority of them will come from Hong Kong. Uh, we have a lot of engagement already from uh, Hong Kong companies, other NGOs, organizations in Hong Kong. And the reality is it's Hong Kong hosting the gay games. We, we want to host the world and we want you to experience the best of Hong Kong. 
So it's unlikely that we'll have a lot of volunteers from outside of uh, Hong Kong, although we will in the, in the next year and a half have a number of people who will, will participate as uh, outreach champions around the world. Uh, for those people coming to Hong Kong, we certainly welcome your support and engagement, uh, but I think we won't have a rigorous uh, support program for people coming to Hong Kong to volunteer. Why is that? Because what we want to do is use the money that we have to focus on uh, producing a great gay games, but also having, as I said before, the biggest scholarship support program we ever had for uh, low income and uh, uh, people that are really out of reach in the local community to participate in this and whose lives we can change in Hong Kong. Great, thank you so much. Um, there's another question and um, someone, he's a, she's a teacher she's a teacher here in hong kong and uh, she, she was hoping or thinking that her students and i believe they are below 18 might want to volunteer what you know what would you answer to her now uh so i think it's great to have uh the interest of uh schools uh, to support us because uh, we have actually a participation age of 18, but that doesn't mean that uh, the people who are in school now in two years won't be of uh, age to participate. So we, we very much would like to have a conversation with her uh, to see how we can partner together uh, from an information perspective and potentially from a, from a uh, kind of work experience perspective. So um, thank you very much. Uh, I think I believe the uh, the lady who was uh, who was asking the question, the name is Natalie. So Natalie, please contact us. Um, go to our website and uh, contact us, and then we we'll see what we can do. We we'll, we'll love to have young people involved. Um, I mean, around this table, we might not be the youngest, but we have some uh, some young people in the team, and we have also older people. So it's all about diversity, and I think that's what we were saying tonight. Um, David, anything else you wanted to add before I talk about gay games in general? Um, just simply join the team. It's, it's, it's um, a wonderful journey, so please just volunteer. I agree. I agree. Volunteer. I think everybody has a skill. If you cannot volunteer as such, you can actually maybe donate. And this is where I plug in that we have now raised over uh, 200 US dollars. So it's not an, a, an amazing sum, but it just means that every single thing count, even $5, even $1, even $2. So thank you very much for everybody that donated. Um, Greg, do you want to um, add anything else before we go? Or before I just talk about gay games in detail? Maybe I could address one, one concern and one question I hear a lot when talking to people. And, it, and the question is often, I'm not sure I have enough time. And, uh, and that to me is a great indication of somebody's level of responsibility that they don't want to overcommit. Um, we're all volunteers and none of us have enough time. And uh, I was just, uh, when I joined the call, I, I ran in, I took off my jacket from work I threw my jacket off from work and then I put on my gay game shirt and then I'll put my That's jacket right. on. So um, it's a great opportunity in our lives to be part of something that's so amazing and life changing, not only for others, but for ourselves. And we can always find the time to do meaningful work and meaningful experience. So I would ask you to just take a look at the gay game site, look at what we're all about, look at some of the openings, think hmm, maybe I could do that. Um, and talk to us about it, and we'd be happy to have the conversation with you. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you, thank Greg. You. And I will say uh, thank you to Johnny. I'm sure she will be dialing in later. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit now about what is gay games. Maybe some of our viewers don't really know what it is just, just yet. Um, so gay games is as you as you hear as you heard from david and 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 greg and johnny is just an amazing and amazing project um and it is and that's an international multi-sport art and cultural event um and i always want to say that and this is because i'm also head of uh, dni but it is celebrating participation inclusion and unity it's open to all irrespectively of gender identity, sec sexual orientation, disability, or age. So it is taking place in Hong Kong. Um, in 2022, we are expected to attract 12,000 12, participants. 
um, 75,000 spectators over 100 countries, regions from, from Hong Kong and around the world. Um, it's the first time in Asia and we are truly honoring the diversity of the region. Um, next slide, please. Next slide, please. And what is our purpose? Um, as, you, as you heard from the great people I spoke to earlier, um, Gate Games has a great purpose, but our purpose is a unique combination of sport, art, culture, fun, and community bringing together a diverse group of people to experience moments of joy. Um, moments of work, as you just heard now, but I think moments of joy, moments of joy preparing the game and moments of joy when we're actually going to be holding the game. It's creating unity and positive attitudes that will last a lifetime in Hong Kong, in Asia and beyond. I think already, and because I'm, I'm going, going back to the theme today, already I think that us as volunteer, we all volunteer here, have actually already embarked in this journey that would just last, you know, last last a lifetime. Next slide, please. So um, what is actually um, Gay Games Hong Kong? What is the program? Um, so as I mentioned at the beginning of, the, of this presentation, uh, it will take place from the 11th to the 19th November 2022. And we have key things, of course. We have a, an opening ceremony. I think David mentioned his experience of the opening ceremony and, uh, and us march, marching in the, in the stadium in the last game, games in Paris in 20, 2018. So uh, the, the opening ceremony will take place at the Hong Kong Stadium and will be a parade where all participants and there will be performances by local and international artists, inter international artists, some speeches short ones. Then Gay Games Hong Kong is a sporting event and it's actually one of the largest sporting events in the world. So we'll have 36 sports. We'll talk about this a little bit, let, bit later. Focus on gender parity and gender a younger demography, including um, we have actually including some great local sports, which is very much dragon boating, dodgeball, trail running, perfect sport in Hong Kong, and e-sport. Um, these sports will be organized by um, Hong Kong National Sports Association together with LGBTQ plus sports organizations. Then we'll have um, the Festival Village. Um, the heart of the festival, of the gay game, will be open daily with live arts and culture sports, performances, daily medal, ceremony, celebration. So it will be a, a community um, festival where you you'll be able to have f and sports and sponsor booths. Gay games is not only sports, it's also about arts and culture. So we will have live performances of choirs, orchestra and dances. We'll have art exhibitions and events showcases local, local Hong Kong history and culture. And once this amazing event uh, will finish, um, I don't know if we'll be crying or, or be, be happy, but I hope we'll be happy because it'll be amazing. Um, we'll have the closing ceremony and that will be the celebration, a celebratory event for all participants, organizers, and of course, volunteers. I mean, again, I'm plugging in the fact that I remember the closing ceremony in Paris for the last gay game. And that was such a joyful moment. It was, it was amazing. Um, I would like to now talk about a little bit about the impact of gay games. Um, we, earlier we talked a little bit about the impact of uh, volunteering for the gay games, but now I want to talk about the impact of the gay games as a whole. Um, let's just talk about the community first. So we really believe that the gay games will be a, a legacy and impact on our community. And when I say the community, it is the LGBTQ community in Hong Kong, in Asia, in the around the world. 
um, the ally community, as well as society as a whole. I mentioned that earlier. And we really, really, really believe that we'll empower the growing LGBT community in Asia and around the world. Uh, we really believe that it will promote a gender diverse and inclusive society and break down stereotypes through sports, arts and culture events. We have seen this with past gay games and I'm sure it will happen in the coming gay games. We also believe in the impacts in individuals. We, talk, we heard about a couple of stories earlier. We heard about a story from Johnny. We heard about a story from, 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 from Greg, where we meet people and people say, you have changed my life. So, um, and I know it's, it's about um, in, in inviting participants to be included in a world-class event. It is about celebrating diversity. Is about empowerment. It's about also making friends for life, um, and this is this is truly what 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 gay games mean. It's um, to bring meaningful changes, um, and there are other impacts. Um, there are impacts on the city and on the region. Um, there are economic impact. We believe that with the twelve thousand participants and the 75,000 uh, spectators from 100 countries, we believe that there will be at least 300,000 hotel rooms night bookings. Um, we don't really know what the world is going to be in exactly in two years time, but we believe things will great, great much better. So we believe that the economic impact will be for about 1 billion Hong Kong dollars, which is about, 128 million US dollar on Hong Kong. It will showcase the greater Bay Area, which is Hong Kong um, and, and China and, and Macau as a destination for sports events because there will be other sports events on that year. International, uh, the, the Winter Olympics in Beijing, the Paralympics in Beijing as well as the Asian game in Hangzhou. So gay games together with this amazing sporting event will just really put us on the map. Great impact on the city, great impact on the region. I also want to talk about a little bit about what we, we discussed a little earlier and I think Greg mentioned, we have a great financial and inclusion scholarship program. Gay games might be quite costly for some people. Uh, you have to come to Hong Kong. You have to have accommodation during the festival. And there is a, a little participation fee. However, we'll have a great financial support program that will make the games highly accessible for everyone, especially underprivileged local and international participants. The Financial Inclusion Scholarship Program will actually open um, next month. So uh, stay tuned. If you are interested, go to our website, but we'll, we'll discuss on, on other webinars and we'll promote this as much as we can. Um, that's if you want to come as a participant and you believe you can't afford it. However, if you also believe that you can support people to come to Hong Kong as organizations, um, groups or individual can actually um, donate. You remember that little crowdfunding link I gave you um, through grant or through crowdfunding. So you can help, anybody can help. Either coming as participant and you think you can cannot afford it, we can help, or you can actually help by um, donating. Now a little bit about the organization. So maybe Greg, I will ask you to pinch in if I if I need to. So, as I mentioned before, um, our team, our full team, what we call our full team, is made up of 136 volunteers. Is that correct, Greg? Am I not completely right. wrong? Good. It changes every day. Every day. Yeah. Good. 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 Good, uh, but we do have um, a management team. So the management team has um, 15 volunteers and we meet twice a month. Um, 
And we also have um, 10 uh, work group working closely with what we call the Federation of Gay Games. And we also have a community engagement council, uh, which is made of community leaders from Hong Kong that help us um, to make, you know, help us to, to advise us on the decision we make and on how things can go. So this is the way our organization is made up um, at the moment. Did you want to add anything, uh, Greg? I think you answered it perfectly. I have nothing more to add. Okay, good. And um, we need more people. So I think you can actually go uh, to the website and uh, go on the vacancies and see if you want to volunteer, see what you can do. Um, now, a few milestones coming up to November 2022. First one, and that's coming up this month, March, I mentioned lunch of pre-registration. You will know more about this in, in, you know, in next, um, next, uh, next webinar, um, but uh, yes, you can start pre-registering. Also, as I mentioned before, um, you will have the opening of the scholarship program. And maybe most importantly, because we are all volunteers, but it just takes quite a bit of um, pretty pennies to put the, uh, the gay games together, we'll make um, the announcement of the platinum sponsors. So that's all in March. March is gonna be a very, very, very busy month. In June, uh, we are targeting to have a, the opening of the participant registration. Uh, we'll see what happens with the COVID situation, but well, that's the target. Um, in November um, this year, we'll have what we call the Federation of Gay Game an Annual Assembly. And that also will include the fact that we'll, um, we'll make the announcement of the next winning city um, and it will be a one year countdown. So that's going to happen in Hong Kong. And in January 2022, in, uh, we'll start recruiting volunteer for on-site events. So that's going to be quite a busy month for you, Greg, and your team. And of course, from the 11th to the 19th of November, Gay Games 11 Hong Kong 2022, the best games ever, or at least the, uh, the first Gay Games in Asia. Now, after all this, um, we, and that's why people always ask us, how can you get involved? And I can see, you can see from the first slide is, join us as a volunteer. Um, Greg mentioned that we, we need volunteers in Hong Kong, but we also uh, need volunteers from, from around the world. Um, you can become a champion that means um, promoting um, gay games in new community and it can be from around the world. Go again, go on our website to find out more. You can also um, invite us uh, for you to, you to your sports and community group. And we can um, either talk to your, to your corporate um, ERG group about Gay Games Hong Kong, or we can do cross promotion. It, it all depends. You can also buy our official merchandise, go to our website, go to our, our Gay Games Hong Kong sport. You can sign up to our newsletter. We have a very regular monthly newsletter with loads of information. You can donate. So let me see where we at with our little donation. Okay, we are at, I can see, we are over 2,000, uh, 200, 200 US, so we're good. Um, and that's our little uh, $1 campaign. You can support Gay Games, Gay Games Hong Kong um, through our um, inclusion scholarship program, which will be, will be launched next month. And also share your stories. You've heard some great stories today. You heard some great stories from, from, from Johnny. You great, heard some great story from, from David. You heard some great story from, from Greg and from myself. If you have a story regarding gay games or gay games Hong Kong, why don't you just share it on your social media and you can tag us. And of course, you know, you can at least join our, our social media channels. We have great Facebook, um, a great Facebook page with lots of information. We have great Instagram, LinkedIn, Weibo, so we're there. But 
please go to our website and check out all the information. Uh, we talk about the 36 sports. Um, I will not list them all, um, but they're all on our website. And um, I think there is something for everyone. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Um, there will be a little survey uh, that will be sent at the end of this, this webinar where we, you can actually just let us know how you felt about this, this, this session as well as if you have further questions and we'll answer as fast as we can. So thank you very much. Our next webinar will be a very exciting one and because we'll be announcing some of our great um, platinum sponsors. So um, that will be on the 25th of March. Please stay tuned. It will be quite an amazing event. But um, for now, thank you very much for listening to us. Um, please do um, stay safe. And the world is a little bit, um, is a bit scary at the moment, but um, us as volunteers, we are working very, very hard to put together an amazing event in exactly 626 days. Thank you very much. <laughs>